Write more tests and have fun. That's a pretty good mantra to uh, live by, I guess. For those of you who were here in this, uh, in this hall at the very beginning of the day, at the, very, uh, um, at the first, first speaker, Max, um, he told us that um, he was from uh, Austria, from Vienna, and uh, he bragged a little bit about being a licensed ski instructor. Well, it turns out, this man here, Nick Graf, is um, a buddy of Max, and he told me in private that he may not be a licensed ski instructor, <laughs> but possibly he could be a better skier than his, <laughs> than his buddy Max. And we have some proof of that. Well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we there actually we go to ski a lot. Um, that's the thing of the Austrians. So you can see Max here. Um, that's me. That's Andre. Okay, great. Well, uh, Max, uh, Nick is a co-creator of Draft.js, which is a React-based framework for uh, building rich text editors. And um, he's one of those people that are getting excited about the um, upcoming convergence of uh, virtual reality and the web. And he's going to give a talk to us about building connected virtu virtual worlds and with uh, using web, web VR and React VR. Wow. I'm already cool. astonished. Take it off. Applause for it. Sure. So yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Nick Graf. That's my Twitter handle. And I'm going to talk about React VR. Um, first of all, um, Max, Andre, and me, uh, we are from Austria. And we run a meetup in Vienna called React Vienna. Um, and since recently, also, there's a new meetup, Reason Vienna. So if you have a drop in Vienna, just let us know. And we're happy um, to let you give a talk or just join us for a meetup. Um, and uh, in, during my daytime, I work at a company called Serverless, where we build tools to allow you build um, infinitely scalable uh, systems, auto-scaling systems, um, serverless. And serverless, the idea is that you basically just write code, you have a configuration, you deploy it to provide us like um, AWS, uh, Google, or Azure, or IBM, and they just auto-scale it for you. And I really like this idea. But today, I'm going to tell you a lot um, about this topic that is very much at my heart, WebVR, or React VR. So let's start off first with, like, who have you heard of React VR? OK, quite a couple of people. Um, who of you who heard of React VR actually tried React VR? Wow, very few hands. That's interesting. And one completely different question. Who of you knows A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? OK, that's a lot more people. Um, for those of you who don't, this talk might be really weird to you, but bear with me. <laughs> Actually, you should go to present here. That might be better than you. Nope. Cool. All right, so today, um, I'm going to walk you through um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to React VR. Um, I've seen not many people raise their hands who actually tried it. That's because what I've learned, most people are actually like 3D. Oh my god, that's weird. Web VR, VR in general, that's even more scarier. But that's why this book on the back has Don't Panic. All right, so let's get started. First, to actually uh, do VR, we need a device. Um, there's a couple of providers out there. There's Oculus, HTC Vive, Samsung Gear, um, Google Cardboard. All of them account as, as VR. And the critical pieces are a screen, hat tracking, a hat mount, um, and lenses. And what's happening is that just these few pieces, they make a completely different experience. And usually we call them an immersive experience. Um, What's actually happening is that most of the people, when they, when they are in VR, they, the, the charbon muscle starts, they, they start, to lose con, stop, um, start to lose control of it, and it mostly looks like this. So it's a, it's a very, very intense experience. Um, it's very exciting. And why, how does this work? Um, so this is basically part one before we go deeper into the topic. It's like, usually if I just take a phone 
and have it in front of my face, that's not a very immersive experience. Because the physical screen, as you can see here, um, is just a little bit of your, of your field of view. But if you take lenses, you can actually take that screen and you can expand it. And that's what's happening if you have these goggles on. They, they just expand your field of view through a lens and they widen your field of view. And that's how you can actually make the whole, like get this experience where you're in a whole room or in a completely different place. And how it works is that if you would just take an image and you would project it, um, if you take a lens, the outcome, the perceived image would be this. So it would be completely distorted um, through the lens. But what we can do is we can take an we can actually reverse uh, the process by making a projected image like this, running it through a lens, and the outcome is a like stable perceived image again. And that's the whole thing. That's the magic about VR, about like how the technology works um, in a in a simple way. All right. So now we know the basics about the hardware. Let's actually um, go one level deeper um, to our road to React VR. Um, and the next step is we need VR on the web um, to actually use it um, in the web. But then what does this mean? Like, what is web VR? What, how, what's going on there? Well, web VR is an experimental JavaScript API that provides you access to virtual reality devices, such as the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, Samsung Gear, Google Daydream, in your browser. And that's really, really exciting because from your browser, you get access to these devices. And to get started first, um, to actually like establish a, a JavaScript API, a new one is you need browser enthusiasm. And that's, we have that. That's really cool. All of the browser vendors are actually like really, really interested to make web VR actually happening and a thing. And that's really cool. Reality nowadays is still a bit different. You see a lot of like red X's. So we're still in the early days. Some browsers support some devices. Most of them support their own platform, but they're adding more and more um, on a daily basis. And sooner um, than later, we will actually have support for these web VR, um, for web VR and all of the devices in the various browsers. Right now, you still need to follow a couple of instructions, enable custom flags in the browser and so on. Um, but you actually can do this, and there's webvr.info. So you get for every browser, for every potential setup, you get instructions how to, to get up and running. So if you want to try this at home, you can do. Um, and then what's really interesting is I told you it's this new API. But the interesting thing is it's just an API to connect to the device. The rest is still web. It's like it's WebGL, it's a canvas, it's nothing special. So we can use all the tools that we use nowadays um, to render 3D scenes, to render panoramas. We can use these tools to, to ac actually make WebVR happen. You don't have to learn a completely new API, a completely new tool. So in the end, you can just use WebGL, WebVR, this thin layer, this small API to get access to your device, WebGL, and then you have your hardware. It could be the, a desktop hardware set, like the Oculus, or it could be like the Samsung Gear, um, a mobile device just with your lenses. All right, so now that we have part two done and we know about that VR, let's actually um, get, into, get into the woods. How can we work with it? Well, you don't wanna, usually you don't wanna work with these raw APIs because they're, they're tricky to handle and there's a lot of stuff you need to learn. But luckily, um, people actually started to build frameworks specifically for web VR. And one of them is A-Frame, which has been there since a while. That's why I want to give a, a shout out to it. And it allows you to do really, really cool stuff because this is like a 3D scene rendered with A-Frame and it's just WebGL. But the cool part is A-Frame automatically adds this box at the bottom right. And if you hit it and you have your VR um, device connected, you just hit that button and suddenly this whole experience is like happens to be in your device. And they have a lot of good stuff. Um, so for example, this is like a very basic example, but it's, it's a very simple concept because if you look at it, it's in the end, like it's also just this component, very simple. 
But yeah, we are in a Rare conference, so the most exciting part is obviously React VR. Let's go into that. Um, we could go through the documentation now, which is really, really good. And if you ever want to do, um, if you look into React VR, I highly recommend you to go through the documentation once. It takes you half a day, and then you know basically everything of the, the existing APIs. Um, but today, I want to make it a, a little bit of a different experience. And I want to show you a live VR experience, how it looks in the browser. Um, and we're going to travel through, through a galaxy for that. But before we travel, when we travel through the galaxy, we obviously need a towel. So I brought my towel, and I hope you did too, when we're traveling through the galaxy. So let's travel a bit. I promised you um, we do this. So what you can see here is this is actually React VR. And this is a galaxy that, that I built with React VR. And if we travel it, there's Earth, there's a couple of other planets, and we're going to explore them. Um, same as A-Frame, if, um, if you have your device connected, actually, there would be a button at the... I mean, it's here. Uh, let me show you. No. Let me quickly go back. That was a little bit ahead. Um, so, it doesn't show up anymore. That, yeah. Interesting. So if you have your device connected, it would be like this, uh, this button again. And then you can click the button and you have the same experience that I'm, that I'm showing you here. It would actually be in, in the device. All right. So let's travel to Earth. You know, you're, when you travel through the galaxy, you start where, we, where you're um, most comfortable with. And we're going to start with Earth. Um, and therefore, we're going to use the infinite probability drive and teleport us to Earth if it would work. Let me actually refresh. You know, that's a problem with fly live demos. <laughs> All right. So we're traveling to Earth. And what you can see here is um, React Amsterdam. That's a picture that I took earlier today in the morning at React Am Amsterdam. And that's a demo of like how this could look like. So pretty cool. Well, you might ask yourself, like, how did he do this? Well. We can ask our guide, our, our hitchhiker's guide to React VR. Um, and obviously, like the first thing you need to know is like, don't panic. This is not going to be hard. It's like in, in three to five minutes, you will know how you can do this by yourself. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is you need to install the React VR CLI. And um, you can use Yarn for that, or you can use NPM. And once you do that, you have React VR the CLI on your system available. And then you can simply run React VR in it, your first project, for example. And it will install, um, it will create a folder, first project. Um, it will put a boilerplate, a React VR boilerplate, in that directory. And it will install right away all your dependencies. If you use Yarn, it will do it with Yarn. If you use NPM, it will do it with NPM. And then you can seed into this project. And you can simply run NPM start or Yarn start. And what we'll get is, um, is basically it will boot up a whole process. Um, and what you'll get is you can visit in your browser localhost 8081 slash VR. And you have your first VR experience there. And that only took you, like, that takes two minutes to get up and running. And you have your first VR experience. To show you that, like, I, and that's just web, you know. And to prove that, like, this is a web presentation. But, you know, what the cool thing about the web is, like, you can take something on the web and you can actually put it into an iframe. And that's what's happening here. This is, this is real, you know? And you could take, you could build a React VR project. You could put it on a, on a static website. You build it, you put it on a static website, and you can include it anywhere, just like as an iframe. You can also like take a little bit more work, and you can include it in your in your um, uh, build process, like using Webpack or whatnot. Um, but that's a little bit more uh, a little bit more complicated. But iframe works pretty well. And what you can see here is the button again, view in VR, and you can actually get this experience in VR. All right, so. This looks pretty cool, but it's still like, oh my god, there's, there's probably a lot of complex stuff behind it. 
No, let's dissect the whole thing, what's in there, what's in the boilerplate. First, we have a package JSON. Sounds pretty familiar, easy, easy start. We have a yarn log file because I used yarn. Um, we have node modules, also not that scary. We have rnclconfig.js, which stands for the React Native CLI. So why is React Native in there when it's React VR and we are on the web? That's, that's a little bit um, troublesome. Well, there's one thing um, you have to know about React VR, or um, VR in general is like, it needs absolutely high performance. If you don't, like, the, the goal is 90 frames per second on the VR device itself, and that means if you, if you want to hit this performance target, uh, one nice way of doing it is, is actually running React outside, um, uh, running React somewhere else than where you actually render. And how they do it is, when you write code, you, they actually run, they take your, they leverage the React Native te technology and run your whole React application inside a web worker. And that's pretty cool because then your main thread is still like, your main thread is only focusing on rendering the fastest frame rate for, um, for your device because if you don't have the fast frame rate, people throw up and you don't want that. <laughs> All right, so now we know this whole thing runs React Native under the hood. But still, you don't have to care about that because you just run yarn start or npm start and you're good to go. All right, let's dig deeper. There's a directory called VR and inside you have a client.js file. There's also an index.html file and this goes back to like, it's just a web application. I'm gonna show you these files in a second, but. I want to give you an overview first. And then there's an index.vr file. And this is the file where you actually make magic happen. And then we have a static assets directory. And then there's a chess world. That's the boilerplate to get started. So let's dig a bit deeper. First, the vr index.html file. Well, it's just a normal HTML file. It has a hat, it has a body, and there are script tags. Because it's React Native, you have .bundle and not .bundle.js, but don't worry too much about it. Um, in the end, like if you build it, you just replace client.bundle with client.bundle.js and it runs on your website. And then what this is, uh, what this does is it actually creates an init method and then um, you can require your index.vr bundle and you can bind it to document body. And one um, or you can place it in the document body. What's, what's really relevant here is that, um, that this is document body. This is what we used from React um, DOM. So you could actually take this whole thing and just place it in one div that you uh, specified for your, your page. Um, yeah, and then the client.js file in the VR. This is a little bit of boilerplate to get started, and this is, this is only there if you build custom free JS, um, custom free JS modules. You can actually inject them here because React VR is built on top of free JS. So everything you built there, you could inject it here, and you could do custom things on every render. In reality, I haven't touched, touched this one yet. But now, we look at the file that's very, very interesting where, where magic is um, happening. So in the, in the top, um, I'm gonna show you two parts, but the first one is just the imports. And at the beginning, you can see we just import React. It's plain React. Um, and then you get a couple of components and, and tools, like you get app registry, you get style sheet, you get panel, text, view, from a library called React VR. And then, this is our whole project. This is our whole thing. There's not more than that. So let's dissect this. Look this. There's react.component. This is like the plain React component, nothing special. Then you have a render method. I did the return here, so I have enough space. The syntax um, is a little bit weird, but um, I, I hope you all can understand. And then we have a few which is basically, I mean, if you know React Native, the view is, is just a wrapper, and it's like on the web, it's like a diff. Um, it doesn't do anything, but you can basically wrap uh, multi multiple elements. And then we have a panel, which is really interesting because the panel is chess world. And then we have a text. Um, what you can see is with the text here is that it's just hello. And then we have like in CSS, um, 
and in, like in inline styles with React or um, styles with in React Native, um, you can see that this is just plain styling. This is background color blue, text align center. There's some new things that you might have not have seen yet. Um, but this is fairly simple stuff, and you can look up the full list, and that's how you can style. And then at the end, we do app registry, registry component, and we um, take this component that we created here and basically register it. And the outcome of this whole thing, of this couple lines of code is, as I showed you before, is this hello. That's the text that we just took here. And we placed it like three meters away. I just said meters, yes. The, the system itself is like, is, is rendering meters. So if you take the text here and you put it three meters away, that's three meters away. And that's awesome. Um, I really, I'm a big fan of the metric system, so um, that made me really happy um, after I found out about that. But that means like, so if you look at this, it's positioned, it has transform and then you can translate and you can basically move this text anywhere in your world. And instead of 2D, you just add one more axis and you're in a 3D world. So I took, I built this text. Actually, this is the boilerplate. I mean, that's, um, they took this text and they, they just translated it like three meters to the backs, but didn't move it up and down um, or left and right. Um, just a little bit forward. And one thing you also can see is like, I mean, this here has a lot of like 3D um, um, elements, but reality is this is just a panorama. And that's pretty cool because it looks like really complex stuff, but it was just a rendering as a 3D panorama, a 360 degree panorama, and then it just put it there, you see? It's like pano, and that's a component that comes out of the box with React VR, and then it's this chest world that we have seen. All right, so far so good. So if you still remember this one, we can actually use the leverage and leverage the same um, technique um, to build this. So what I did earlier today is I took this picture um, with a 360 degree camera. It's just like, it just takes two fisheye pictures, which are a little bit more than 180 degrees, so you can combine them. And then you run it through some program and you create this, um, this stretched image, this panorama, and you can take it, and I just took the panel, the chess world out, replaced it with my React Amsterdam JPEG. It's just JPEG. Changed the text, removed some styling, and because I don't want to have the blue background, and changed the text to welcome React Amsterdam. And that's the outcome. And I find this pretty amazing because that's only a couple of minutes work, and you get a 360 degree experience in your device out of the box, and it's like, it's no work. All right. Cool. So now that we know how to do panels, um, I want to travel a bit further, and I want to show you a world called Forestonia, and maybe learn a little bit about its history. So we have to boot up our infinite improbability drive again. We go back to space. And when we are back to space, we can see this world, Forestonia. So Forestonia is a pretty green planet. It's, it's very bright. Is there anything interesting? Yes, there is. There are trees, 3D trees. Wow, that's cool. Um, two of them. So this is, this is actually Forestonia a million years back um, uh, when React VR was in its very early stages. But 3D trees, how we built that. How can we do this? Let's go back to our guide, the Hitchhiker's Guide to React VR. All right, so how can we create an object? Let's dig deeper. First, I'm gonna start out with my experience. Like, this is literally how it happened on December 26th or 27th, um, 2016. And what I did is I used a tool called Blender. I created a 3D cube, just added a blue material, and then I exported it. And I had the option to export it to an, um, to an, a format called wavefront object with dot object at the end and MTL, wavefront material. And luckily, React VR has this component out of the box, which is called model. And the cool stuff about model is you can provide a source, which is object and material, and that's it. 
And then you have uh, additional parameters. So um, lit uh, means like this cube is actually affected by lightning. And I also added a point light. Um, I added back my chest wall and I added this point light so that uh, I positioned the cube and I added the point light um, somewhere up there and made sure that this cube is actually like um, um, the light is affecting the cube. And yeah, you can see here, I rotated the cube a little bit with the Y and the X axis and I positioned it about 20 meters away from me and five meters down. And the result then is that Give me a second, if it loads. The result of it was this. I got my chess world and my own cube in there. And that was not too hard, you know. Taking Blender or Maya or whatnot, they're like complicated tools, but um, creating simple structures is, is not that hard. And it took me like half an hour to figure that out. And once you've done that, it's pretty straightforward. And you can actually find a lot of 3D models out there um, for free. But what happened is like the first time I got this cube in, in the browser happening and like in, I could take this to VR. I don't know how you feel about that, but I felt like this, you know, this is freaking amazing. Um, all right. But I have promised you, I tell you like how we built these trees. So let's, well, from there on, if you know how to build an object, the, the possibilities are infinite, you know, it's pretty straightforward. So I just created these two objects in, in, in Blender again, uh, which is the tree crown, obviously, and then the tree trunk. And then just created a new component, which I, I put it in the file tree.js. I said export default. I have my style, which is the view, so I actually can place it and pass the style uh, to the view down there. And I used two models. Uh, one is the tree trunk and one is the tree crown. And the only thing I needed to do is like the tree crown obviously sits above the tree trunk. So I had to translate it like 2.5 meters up. And then I had a tree component. And like I probably stressed it too many times already, but I will, let me do it one more. This is just plain React. This is all what we know and what we can do. And it's super simple. All right. And then you can take these trees, you can import this tree component, and you can place it um, in the world, in the 3D world. And obviously, there's a little bit more. There's a point light, there's an ambient light. Um, because I had to make this happen, I used the heaven as a panel. I used another model as a plane. But that's what we got back when we got our... Um, this is all you need to build this world with these two trees. All right, let's go a little bit forward in time because I told you this was a long, long time ago. So how does Forestonia look like today? This is Forestonia. It's actually a forest, you know. So how can you do that? That's, um, I created a grid of X, Y positions. To be honest, like of all of my React VR stuff, that was the most complicated part, you know, like creating cross product with dots on X, Y positions, really math, hard stuff. Then let's go back to the easy part. We just take these X, Y positions, we map over them, and we create an array of tree components. And I put that into a forest.js component, and that's it. And then I could take this forest, and I could place it somewhere in the world, and the result was this, you know? And this is really, really, I, I can't stress this enough, but this is so exciting. And if you don't believe me, like, I have friends who told me, like, man, this is, this is like useless stuff, you know, what are you doing there? You, you sit alone in your headset. Um, but after I built this forest, they actually like, yeah, okay, let me try, you know? And they tried on, and the first thing is, like, they try to grab the tree, you know? It's like, it's, it's so, such an amazing experience. Well, all right. So, now that you know about React VR, who is going to start um, playing with React VR tonight? Okay, a couple of people, not too many. Um, let's see how a good old friend of us thinks about this. Let me figure out where the planet is. Well, here's our little bit depressed Robert Marvin. So Marvin, how do you feel about 
these little people. Well, not too many, obviously. This is not a too fancy animation, but let me stress that, like, if you know React Native, there it also comes um, with an animated library. And you can use, it's the same syntax, it's actually the same thing, and so you can animate stuff. And that's really, really cool, because you get not only the modeling and the texturing and the, the materials out of the box, but you also get, um, you get the animation stuff. All right, so last but not least, what is the meaning of all that? Well, if we have our meaning, if we don't know the meaning, but we have the question like, what's the meaning? We can ask our good old friend, Deep Thought. And Deep Thought told me it's 42. <laughs> All right. Um, if you're still not convinced, I put like almost all of my experiments to a GitHub repository under slash Nicraft slash WebVR dash experiments. And you can try all that by yourself. It's like, it's, um, it's uh, broken down to each step that I personally um, experimented with and discovered. And don't forget, never panic. Thank you very much.